Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to talk a little bit about flocking. Also, I know what you're thinking. Did I borrow my wife's shirt? No, she actually borrows this shirt from me. I was talking to Paul Conigliaro the other day, aka Koenigs, and we were talking about flocking, which is what this kind of thing is. We were talking about how the latest liquid movement tutorial I did was kind of like flocking. Flocking in the usual sense is where you can assign behaviors to different elements and they begin to move in patterns that follow those behaviors. I'm sure that if you actually took the time, you probably could have an actual set of behaviors where each element reacts according to the others, but you can get a pretty good simulation here just by faking it. And that's what we're gonna do. So let's open up this comp and see how it's built. Interesting fact, this fire actually comes from the tutorial I did around Thanksgiving last year, and this is the tutorial for Thanksgiving this year. There's a bunch of different expressions in this one, and you can do different things with it. So rather than putting all the code in the description or on our website, I'm just going to publish the project on the website. I'm going to go over the code really quickly so you can see how it works. But if you want to mess around with this, download that project. Okay, first things first, each element looks at this controller for a lot of different things. These are all slider controls. The first is number of paths. And down here at the bottom, I have a paths layer. And you can see I've just drawn in a couple of Bezier paths. that kind of go like little embers from a fire would go. There's three of them, so we have our controller set to three. The size is the size of the particles. I don't have any randomness on those, but you could do that if you wanted to. Then I have a completion setting. And if you only wanted these things to go through like once, you would set this from zero to 100. Instead, on ours, we want it to loop over a bunch of times. So here we have time, and then we're multiplying it by this speed slider, which is right here. And actually, I'm gonna move that up. And that's being modulus by 100. So once we go past 100, we loop back to zero. And we go from zero to 100, zero to 100, over and over and over again. That completion value determines where upon those paths our points are. So at the beginning of the stroke it's zero and at the end it's 100% completed. And the reason we use modulus here is so that that can repeat after we go through once the next particle can come up. So obviously speed affects how fast these go up. You can also randomize that value in this. A lot of the behaviors in these things are randomized so that the elements are kind of individual. And then we have a threshold setting which determines how far along the path things get before they actually start to fade out. Next is delay frames. If we didn't have this, all of these particles would start at the same time and end at the same time. But I want them all to start and begin at different times, so we have a delay built in. The last one is spacing, and that determines how far away from the path the things can get. All right, so let's close this up and look at one of these elements. We're gonna hit EE to open up our expressions, and I'm just gonna full screen this. Again, I'd show you this in Expressionist, but this is a 2018 feature, and they're still working on getting it updated to work. All right, so the first one I want to talk about is this delay slider I have on here. You're probably wondering why I have two different delay sliders. And that's because this delay value is actually used in a couple of different things. And since we're randomizing that, I want this value to stay the same. And plus, this way we only have to calculate it once. So that we're running the seed random function and giving it index, comma, true as parameters. And then the next line we set delay equal to the delay slider control on our controller layer, which is going to give us how many frames it can actually delay by. And we're going to randomly pick a value between negative delay and delay and multiplying that by this comp dot frame duration. So that's gonna give us a value in time that we can feed into uh, value at time expressions. All right, so then we're gonna set our position of this element. And you can see we're still doing seed random index true as our first line here. And we forgot our semicolon. It's technically not necessary, but I'm old school and I'm gonna put it in there. All right, so then we're setting delay equal to that delay slider we just talked about. And then we're gonna look for our paths. So if you remember, there are three paths in there. So I want each one of these particles to randomly pick a path. Since we set seed random, with the timeless value of true, our random values aren't gonna change every frame. So once it's picked a path, it's gonna stay with that path. All right, so we're setting path equal to math.floor, and we're gonna floor random from one to that number of paths slider. So in this case, it's gonna be one to three. Random picks a floating point numbers, like 1.2 or 1.27 or something like that. So this floor just makes sure that that's gonna be one. 2.2 would be two, and so on. And then we're gonna set a variable spacing equal to that spacing slider. Then we're gonna have R, X, that's just going to stand for random x value, equal to random from negative spacing to spacing. Then we have ry doing the same thing. That gives us a random offset from our path. Then we're going to set c for completion to that completion slider, but we're going to put dot value at time, time plus delay. And then we're going to divide that by 100, because the next part wants that number to be from 0 to 1. I wanted that completion slider to be like 100%, because that makes more sense. So dividing by 100, we're just unscaling that value. And then I set this POS value. I don't know why, we don't need that. We're gonna just do two comp, and then the rest of this is in parentheses until the end. 
this comp dot layer path content. All right. So this part is kind of important. It's not just a pick whip the value. You can see here we have dot content, open paren, quote, capital shape, space, and then we close that quote. Then we have a space and a plus and a space, and then we have path. So if you remember from up here, that path is going to be a random number from one to three. So we're going to have path one, path two, path three. So since inside our paths here, we have shape one, shape two, shape three. This is how it picks which one of those to use. All the paths inside those are just path one. So the rest of it's just dot content path one dot path. And then another part of magic here is dot point on path. And then we're going to take that completion value C from the previous line. This is a number from zero to one. So here we're getting the comp space position of one of those shapes and their path. And then we're finding out where along the path that point lies based on the completion value. So that gives us a position that lines up exactly on our path. And then we're going to add an array. So in brackets here, we have RX comma RY, and that's our random offset away from that path. So if this is 10, 10, it'll be 10 pixels over and 10 pixels down from the path. All right. So that's that one. You can see I've also added a wiggle to the position of the ellipse that we have in here. It's not the overall layers position. It's just the position of the ellipse directly. So it just adds a little bit more random motion to it. I have it set to wiggle 0.5. So half a time per second by up to a hundred. You can tie that to a slider too, if you want, so they can move randomly and then come in line or whatever. Like I said, there's a lot of different little behavioral things you can add to this. And that would be one of them, but I just didn't include it here. All right. So then we're going to have our size parameter of the ellipse. I want it to scale up as we start and scale down as we end, but there's also some randomness as to how far it starts and ends. So let's take a look at that one. So in this first line, we're going to set threshold equal to that threshold slider that's on our controller. And then we're going to set delay equal to the delay slider that's on this particular layer. Then we're also going to do seed random index comma true. And then we're going to set an end value here. That's going to be a random number between the threshold and 100. So say our threshold is set to 80. This will be a number between 80 and 100. So somewhere between 80 and 100, the particle would start scaling down. So obviously if the threshold is set lower, the individual particles can start to scale a little sooner but they still could go the full way. All right. Then our next line, we're setting C again for completion equal to that completion slider. And again, it's going to be dot value at time, time plus delay, just like before, except here, we're not going to divide it by hundred. Then we're going to set value S equal to that size slider on our controller layer. This is another thing you could randomize if you want to, but here we're just keeping our particles all the same size. Then we're going to have a conditional. So if C is greater than threshold. So if our completion is past the threshold value, that means we know the next thing that's going to happen is our particle is going to scale out. So we're going to set S equal to ease out as C goes from end minus 10. So if the random number actually is 80, this would be from 70 to 80. We're going to go from our size slider to zero. You could also randomize this 10 value if you want to, so that some particles could take longer to scale in or scale out. Again, I didn't do that, but that's another thing that you can do to customize this. So then we're going to have else, which means that we're before the threshold. So our particles will only be scaling in. So we're going to set S equal to E is in as that completion value goes from zero to 10. We're going to go from a size of zero to S the full size that we're going to have. And then after that, we're just going to do S comma S and that's it for the size parameter. Obviously there's a whole bunch of different things you could do. One thing I want to explore, but I still haven't yet is to actually slow down these particles based on their size. So you'd randomize the size and use that kind of as a mass in your position expression to slow down the completion. One way to probably easily do that would be to take that completion slider off of the controller and add it to the individual elements and then just change its speed value based on its mass. I'll probably do that at some point and post it on the blog. So make sure you follow me on Twitter. All right, let's close this up. Let's go back to our regular window. Check this out. That's what it looks like when it's going. You can go into here and change your values around make the spacing higher, which kind of makes them float out all over the place a little bit more. You can bring that spacing tighter. This is what it looks like with zero spacing. They just follow the paths. Which even that actually looks pretty cool. You can increase the delay so they don't bunch up as much. You can make the speed a little faster. So that's how you do that. And the main example that I had before, the only difference is that the paths are a different shape and on our controller, we have the spacing animated. So as the light turns on, they start to fall in line closer to the paths. In this case, I just have five circles of different sizes kind of overlapping.
And actually, I noticed that I didn't get five on here because I copied this controller from something earlier. So there we go. Now they're a little bit more random. You can actually bring these delay up a little bit more so that they're a little bit more offset. And don't kind of go in and out at the same time. So there you go. With a couple of expressions and some paths, you have a pretty good approximation of an actual flocking behavior. With a few more sliders and a couple more random options, you can make this even more custom. So that's it. I hope you guys take it and have fun with that one. All right, guys, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep an eye on the blog for an update to this and a couple of other things like our Black Friday sale. All right, as always, I am Joe, and I will see you guys next week. Happy Thanksgiving to my Americans, and enjoy some food anyway, my Americans. Bye. <laughs>